All right, let's pick up where I left off last time. And probably should remind myself where exactly did I leave off last time. So I have these two dudes here. This guy can attack. Well, okay. First problem I want to sort out, I think, is that it actually attacks uh, when he shouldn't be attacking. If the weapon just hits the other guy, it does damage. Okay, first thing to sort out. Uh, let's see. Open up my script. This will be the player attack script or the melee weapon script. I think it's the melee weapon script. So okay, let's get a couple of scripts open then. Melee weapon. Okay, so right now this just all happens whenever. Okay, let's move all this actually. Let's extract this to a new method. Okay, let's just use cut and paste in that case. Uh, Private, void, hit. Will it hit opponent? Might not actually be an enemy, it could be friendly fire too. Oh, and pass through. Hit opponent, and let's pass through the trigger. Collider 2D. Trigger. Okay. Now I can simply say, how am I going to do this? Well, basically, if we're currently attacking, it's something like if weapon is swinging. Um, okay, so I'm, let's see, I'm calling that, calling the melee weapon from player attacks. Punch, it's not really a punch anymore. Let's call this swing weapon. Name things for what they actually are. Okay, so swing weapon. Um, I think I have a variable here. Do I have a variable like is attacking? Set attack variables. What does set attack variables do? Yeah, okay, player movement is attacking. Um, so that's in player movement. Okay, so that basically is true. This isn't specific enough. I want this to actually be like, is swimming weapon, let's call it that. No, you know what? I'll leave it as attacking for now. I might change this later. Okay. So, melee weapon. Basically, I can say. Do I have a reference to player movement? I do not. Private player movement. Player movement. Player movement equals get component in. Parent movement. Now I can get a reference to this and say if player movement dot should be coming up. If player movement dot is should be auto completing. Maybe I don't. App is set to be a public variable. Let's take a look. Is attacking, is attacking, is attacking. It is set to be a public variable. Okay. Do I have a syntax error? Private player movement. OK. 
Okay, just save my scripts again. Let's just try to run it and see what error it gives me. Melee weapon must have a body because it is not marked as abstract, external, or partial. Oh, brackets. That would be why. Okay, there we go. I knew it was going to be something stupid. Okay, so let's just say if it is attacking. So now if I run into this guy, it should no longer do any damage. Yeah, he's not attacking, so nothing's being done. But if I swing, ha ha, look at that. Now he only attacks when he's supposed to attack. Well, that was an easy fix. A lot of health going down over there. Um, okay. Now I believe he does not actually die when he's supposed to die. So maybe I can work on that. If player movement, um, now that would be controlled by the health script. That makes sense. So let's look at the Viking. You have a health script attached to you. There it is. Void die. Game manager, instance, kill player, player number. Your player one. Your player two. Okay, maybe it does kill him. Let's make his weapon do more damage. This. Yeah, I can already see this is going to be a problem. Controlling the weapon damage all the way from his weapon. Uh, I don't really want to have to scroll down all that way. I should probably change that. God damn it. There's a weapon. Sword. And also the sword hitbox can probably just be on the weapon itself. It doesn't, I don't think it needs its own hitbox. It's for testing purposes though. Weapon now does 50 damage. 50 and, okay, so this guy's not actually dying. Okay, what is the gameplay manager referencing right now? Gee, let me fix one thing at a time. Polygon Collider. Copy you, we're just gonna put you right on the sword, I think. weapon script. I'll put you on the sword for now. This might change again later. And my rigid body 2D. Paste. Okay. It's not really a sword. It's a like a pickaxe, whatever. I want to make this more specific later that it can only attack on the downswing, but uh, okay for now that'll that'll do that'll do. Okay, so you are going to the gameplay manager and you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Ah, that's why, because my reference to player one is the wrong object. Right now, player one is the Viking. Player two is a samurai. Hello, hero. Thanks for tuning in. I am just kind of starting on this uh, making a game segment here, so nothing too fancy or exciting is going on yet. I'm just kind of trying to decide where to take this game right now. Are you a game developer yourself or uh, kind of an enthusiast? All right now I'm just getting these two characters to kind of interact properly. And right 
and they're kind of doing their job. I don't have any sound or anything in here, so it's not terribly exciting at the moment. Um, okay, right now this is a trigger. I feel like that should be... These are physical weapons, though. They should not be trigger colliders. These should actually be making physical connections with their opponents, I think. Let's see. Mr. Samurai, did I give you hitboxes? Okay, I give you hitboxes on your arms. That seems unnecessary. You're le learning. Oh, super bad. Hey, that's okay. We all got to start somewhere. I've only been doing game development myself for about a year. and uh, Or a year and a half, I guess, at this point. And I started from absolutely no game development background and have since then released two Android apps and I'm now starting to work on something which I'm thinking down the road will be for Steam, uh, but for now is just kind of uh, just fi figuring things out. This is a little more, well, way more complicated than the previous ones I worked on, so it's uh, definitely a bit of a learning process. Um, right. Now, I'm trying to basically figure out what's the best way to make these cool two guys here interact with each other. Uh, so I, I've got hitboxes for this guy on his arm, which just seems unnecessary. I'm thinking like one hitbox for his entire body would make more sense, and then a separate hitbox for the head. Right? That makes sense, I think. Like, I'm, I'm messing around so much with these two guys here. Let's maybe get rid of this polygon collider over here or but it does make it make nah no I'm very I'm, I'm being indecisive let's add another polygon collider for this dude's head and we'll make this the head hitbox So what, what kind of uh, games are you working on? And like, are you taking a course through school or through... Or are you just kind of like learning on your own? That's kind of a somewhat accurate head hitbox, I think. Depends, I guess, if I want his hat to count as the hitbox too. Um, maybe you're just a bit lower. I don't know, this can all be changed. So actually, I guess left arm and right arm, I mean, that's the part that would technically be getting hit anyway. Let's see, another polygon collider here for his foot. Might be overkill. Might very well be overkill. I'll just try that. And right foot, it can have its own polygon collider. 2D game development is fun, and like that that's the type of games I've made as well right now. It, I think it, it's definitely an easier starting point than 3D, right? Because when you start getting into 3D, then people start talking about like mesh renderers and everything needs the right polygon count. And I, I don't know, it just seems way more complicated. 2D, 2D is a lot of fun. Um, and, and YouTube can, I, I don't know, YouTube can be a good source, it, but it, it is free on YouTube, so you, people say you get what you pay for, and there is some truth to that as well. I started originally trying to follow some uh, YouTube tutorials, and then eventually moved on to Udemy, and took a Ben Tristam's course on there, and that sort of taught me everything that I needed to know, at least for a starting point. Um, all right, so melee weapon is no longer going to be on trigger enter 2D. Are you using a Unity, by the way, for programming, or are you using a different program? Let's call this, uh, what is it, not trigger, on collision enter 2D. Collision 2D. Collision. 
let's call this call for short. So I don't know if you've dealt with uh, colliders and and uh, hitboxes and all this yet. Um, but there's basically two types. Oh, you're starting to bug me. Stop posting. Uh, sorry about that. The bots are automatically preventing you from putting links in here. Um, I'm still learning Twitch, so I don't actually. I I'll give you the command so you can put links if I can figure out what it is. It's like authorize. Yeah, I. Sorry, I don't. I don't know what the command is to let you post links. But yeah, Unity, that's what I'm using too here, obviously. Uh, the name trigger does not exist in this context. Well, of course, because I probably just, I just changed this. Aha! Core object. I'm basically, what I'm doing right now is basically making my life more difficult in the short run for the trade-off that it's hopefully going to be easier in the long run because I'm doing things that may or may not make sense right now but hopefully do later but because these are two physical objects that are colliding into each other I feel like they should have those hitboxes um, <laughs> oh god I, can, I think I see maybe why I'm doing it this way my, my guy is basically flying in midair because all these hitboxes I put on him are now colliding into each other. Um, obviously, I don't want that to happen. I only want them to be uh, colliding with different hitboxes or with that from other game objects. So, okay, let me see if I can figure out a way around that. Um, I'm kind of doing that here. Oh, I, I just heard a sound. I, I just set up alert. So I think that means you just followed me. So if that is the case, yes. Thank you for the follow. And you were the first person to help me test my alert and see if it's working. Let's, uh, let's see, so right now, if we see these get components here, um, it is just gonna return, prevent attacking itself. But okay, so basically all these colliders that I put on itself are interacting with each other. I need like a script or something on these. Okay, so basically I think what I need to do here is add a new script on anything that has a, uh, a hitbox on it. Let's just try this. I'm just gonna call it, make a new script, call it hitbox, and attach it to all these game objects I put scripts on, or uh, colliders on. So here is the, okay, so the head, the arm, uh, the other arm, and the left foot, and the right foot. I really hope I'm doing this in a way that makes sense because I'm not following any tutorials for doing this. I'm just kind of figuring it out as I go along and making mistakes because that is how the cool kids do this. So basically, Okay, um, say void on collision, enter 2D, collision 2D, oops, and kind of do the same thing that I did over here in this other script, which is try to more or less prevent it from hitting itself. Um, okay, I think to make this work, I'm going to need to put this hitbox script on the main guy as well. God, this is so much more complicated doing this as physical colliders. Why, why am I doing this? Okay, and I can just kind of copy some of this code over right now. And we 
are going to just basically do this same thing, prevent these hitboxes from hitting themselves. So if this hitbox equals the same script that's in the parent hitbox, prevent colliding myself. Mm. Which, uh, you, which YouTube tutorials are you following, by the way? Nope, that is not working. <sighs> I am doing this as add force. It actually adds an extra layer of challenge for streaming and talking about this as I'm doing it. Because normally I'd just be thinking in my own head, but I want I want to keep talking. And you're following all of them. There's a lot of tutorials on there. Who are, who are those? Who's the big guys? That I think like Braxies or something. I I actually have some tutorials on there myself. I have a, like a Make a Pong series and then a Make a Tetris clone series. That one I never actually finished. Feel bad about that. I should go back at some point. But uh, there is a complete Make a Pong clone series on there. I, li I like the Unity ones, though. Those are good. Um, okay, getting back to it. This dude needs to stop colliding with himself. Uh, okay, first of all, let's set this guy's whole layer to player. Yes, change children. Oh! Well, obviously, this, this guy's not colliding with it. He's not the problem. It's the Viking over here who's the problem. I'm, I'm editing the one guy, and my wife, my problems are with the other guy. Ah, uh, genius that I am. Okay, so basically, everything I just did for that one guy, I gotta do for this guy now. So have you dealt with these uh, with uh, characters like this that have bones on them? Oh, I just heard a sound effect go off. Hi, Lord Clam. Thank you for following as well. Appreciate it, man. Didn't I didn't realize I had someone else in here. Yeah, these dealing with these bones is kind of interesting. Because basically, if uh, you can move them around, and it, it will, it should move anything that's actually attached to it. So, like, if I move this guy's head, it moves his hat as well. Uh, if I move his torso, it kind of moves all the other bones that are attached to it. It's really powerful for animations. So this is uh, this is actually part of a pack that was bought off of the Unity Store. Because uh, I cannot design artwork by, by any standards. Oh, actually, I just answered that before you typed it. Haha, -ha, I was foreseeing the future. Um, yeah, no, I, I can't draw or anything. So fortunately, that's why there's uh, lots of free assets out there. But uh, I, if I feel like I'm going to actually take a game somewhere, I don't mind dropping a little bit of money into it, especially for things like art, right? Because you see good art in a game that's actually going to make you want to play the game and download it and buy it. It's a different story. Totally, Clam. It is very, very hard to do good artwork. Um, and it's kind of funny. Like, I, it would be great to have know someone who does artwork, and it's like, hey, I need a programmer to make my game, and then I could be like, hey, I need an artist to do art for my game, and you know, help each other out. But not that easy to come across. So, anyways, um, what was I doing here? I was going to try adding physical hitboxes onto these dudes. So let's go back to what I was working at. This guy's got a big, bigger head. He'll be an easier target to hit. Um, don't need to be... I could probably just use a circle collider for this. You know what, let's just try doing that, see if I like that better. Let's have us use a circle collider instead. So Clown, I take it, uh, you would comment like that, obviously, you're a uh, game dev yourself, too? OK, 
Okay, let's give that a try. And left arm. Actually, this you know what this this guy's got a shield on his. No, he, this is his left arm, right? Left arm is. Okay, so he can't be hit on his left arm. He has a shield. He can block. He can totally block that. Ever published toy around with JavaScript and small simple games? Hey, that's cool. All got to start somewhere. I've I've never used JavaScript. Actually, I started when I when I didn't know any programming. I started following some YouTube tutorials, and uh, they were talking about JavaScript. And I started following this guy, and man, it, it was confusing and weird. And his tutorials were out of date, so he's like talking about things, and all the tutorials are saying something else because what he was saying was outdated. So that's when I took the Udemy course, and it made a lot more sense, and I had more fun with it. Okay, so where is this guy's shield in the bones? Oh, maybe it's just like, it's just the sprite? Okay, you know what? I know what I have to do. I have to add a circle collider on here because the shield is going to move with the bones. Shrink that down to be about the same size. And put that on here a bit more. Like 2D RTS games and find it's easy to create quickly. Really? You find it's it's quick to create an RTS game? Man, that seems like it would be so complicated to do. Are, are you creating from scratch or like you're using kind of a built-in engine or something? Like I, I know even Unity has uh, engines you can download for platformers like the Corgi engine is kind of is supposed to be uh, kind of a big deal. Um, I, I like just doing from scratch though. This, this is like a fun hobby for me, so. Um, I, I just want to take my time and enjoy the whole process. Man, RTS, that sounds so hard. I always create from scratch, find it better to learn. Yeah, exactly. That is the best way to, to do it, to, to learn something. Just go along and figure it out. I like to hang out on the uh, Unity 2D forums on Reddit a lot as well, and that's what people are always saying on there, like, oh, I have a great idea for a game, how, how can I get started, what should I do, and it's always the number one piece of advice is just, just do it. As soon as you know enough, or even if you don't know enough, just do it and see what you can figure out. Okay, added all these colliders. Um, Let's see what's going to happen. Okay, so this guy is still going haywire. Um, let's add this hitbox script onto here, though. Right arm. Here is my hitbox script. Any others? And I think I put it on to parent level, too. Okay, RTF isn't the only type of games. R RTS is fun. I suck at RTS games myself, so uh, I, w I wouldn't mind learning some more 3D and making like a first-person shooter, but man, I, I cannot do RTS. I know I can, I can just, I can have this working if I treat these as trigger colliders, and I'm thinking may maybe that is just what I should do, but... I just don't want these colliders to interact with each other. And I want to have all the players marked as players, so like I can't like like this player over here should be all right, I'm pointing at my screen doesn't help, I just realized that. But this player here should be able to interact and hit this player here, but this player can't hit himself. I can set a layer to ignore itself, but I want to have all the players listed as layer player. And then the same thing, enemies would be listed as like enemies. Mm. Oh 
Okay. So that's going to interact with each other by default. Well, I'm just going to try it this way for a second, though. Change this guy to the player to player. Can you reorganize these? Player three. Player four. Enemy. Let's just try this and see what happens. Another thing I'm going to try to be doing with this one is turning it into an online game. And I have never, ever messed with online. I don't know what you have to do for it. I, I know Unity has some built-in tools, so I think that's what I'll be using. But I've never attempted to use it myself. So that should be interesting. Let's go to Edit, Project Settings, Physics 2D. So Player and Player 2... So players cannot interact with themselves is what I'm after here. Uh, here's player. Okay. Player cannot interact with self. Let's just take that off. Okay, so that works. Now the player cannot interact with himself, but he can still... Heh, <laughs> he cannot interact with that guy because I didn't change his layer yet. You are now player two, my friend. which kind of nullifies the whole point of having this other hitbox. Or this hitbox script, for now. Okay, um, back to edit, project settings, physics 2D. So player two and player two cannot interact with each other. Player three, player three. Player 4, player 4, even though I only have two players on the screen. But that should basically prevent these guys from interacting. Um, did I make it so they can't hit each other now? What did I do? Wow, and that guy is out of here. So this guy can currently not hit his enemy. Probably missing a script or something. Let's see. Right arm, sword, melee weapon. No, you have that on there. Oh, because I changed this, right. That is now no longer a trigger collider, it's a physical collider. Yeah. Yes. You do far less damage, so you're going to lose this fight. And you can't get past that guy's sword, so... But they can hit each other. How cool is that, eh? And if this guy dies... Look at these animations. Ugh. Get out of here. Okay, he's dead. Revive him. And just to test if I'm still on track. Can this guy still kill the other guy? Yes, he dies. And then he revives. Cool, so that's actually kind of working the way I wanted to. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm excited. It's so nice when actually what you're doing works, because there are a lot of times when what you're doing doesn't work at all whatsoever. Um, so I, uh, this isn't actually supposed to be a fighting game between players. Like, I, I want this to be a, sort of a PvE type game where you're cooperating. I haven't put any enemies in yet because I just try to get the players to interact with each other because I, I do want them to be able to fight and hit each other at the same time so friendly fire is a thing and you know like hey we're working on a team but at the same time we can kill each other haha -ha. I'm not going to stab you in the back my friend kind of inspired by the game stick fights on steam I don't know if uh, you guys have ever played that okay maybe I should try adding an enemy into the scene just because these guys are uh, they still need work. They did, both of them definitely need work, but for now they're they're kind of doing what they're supposed to do. So let's see. Do I actually have any enemies yet? Um, have I brought any enemy sprites into this? Okay, so I brought some. These are all like 
free asset sprites. Um, th there's a great game pack. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's like two, three bucks. I, I, multiplayer, you just kill your friends. There's no real point to it other than just hilariousness. Um, but yeah, there's this uh, free sprite pack uh, called Glitch Garden. Uh, it was the, like this game that... I'll bring it up on screen, actually. Glitch Garden. Yeah, so if you're looking for... 2D sprite assets. Uh, this was a free or a game that I guess never got released. And what the creators did is they put everything in the public domain. So there's like tons and tons of sprites on here that you can use for your games, uh, background art, all sorts of stuff. And it's just like free to use for whatever game you want. Uh, so what I did is I kind of went through here and I, I took some of the sprites that I liked and I'm going to be, uh, at least for now, using those as enemies. And that's what these guys are over here that I'm about to drag into the scene. Um, this guy is like a walking guy. But it's really, really cool. There's, there's tons and tons of free assets in there. And so if you are in need of game assets, go check it out and download it. It costs you absolutely nothing. Let's see, okay. So I'm gonna take this guy here. I'll just slice these automatically. And apply. Okay, I have like a, oh, this is so, this guy's time tiny compared to these guys. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be fun. Also, um, okay, so let's actually start off by me like, I hate, I hate uh, making things larger, but yeah, the quality is horrible if I do that. Shoot. Maybe this guy's not going to work, or I have to shrink everything else down. Ah, uh, the fun of... Oh, yeah, I should put the link in here, shouldn't I? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm new to Twitch. Let me grab that for you. There we go. There's the link in Twitch. Thank you for that. And just need the proof of concept. You can always get art created later. That's true. That's why I don't mind using like placeholders as long as the, you know, hopefully it doesn't require like too much do overs. All right. That is walk. That's the walk animation. Assets, animations, enemies, um, walking guy. Very creative name, I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I said, still, if I'm gonna like show off a link, I should probably put it in chat. Just a good habit to get into. walking at me. And is that animation working by default? Should be. It's a little bit of a slow walk. Oh, it's such low quality compared to the others though. Like, eh. Whatever, he's a placeholder for now. It'll do. Okay, um, well, let's have some fun here, I guess, and create some new scripts. I love creating scripts that are brand new. Um, enemy movement, which would probably be kind of similar to the player movement. Also, it's not a player script, it's an enemy script. So I need a new folder. I like keeping things organized. Uh, enemy movement over there. Okay, cool. And let's open this up and see how I can organize it. So, first things first, probably decide what type of enemy it's going to be. 
I like just using booleans for this. Um, walking, flying. Sp oh no, I guess walking, flying, or jumping. Well, those would be it, right? That sounds like. Let's add a tooltip in there. Type of enemy. Okay, and I'll need some components. Uh, private rigid body 2D body. Uh, we'll need access to an animator, I'm sure. Private animator, animator. And let's say void awake. Initial, spell things right. Initialize variables. Void, shall I spell it right? Or I could just, you know, copy it. Body equals get component your body 2D. Of course, won't do anything unless I actually have these components equipped. So let's add a rigid body 2D. And let's add an animator. Oh, because he already has an animator, of course. And well, he'll need a collider as well. Just for now, I'm gonna put a circle collider on him because it's easy. And that goes around him kind of wellish. So you've been you said uh, you've never actually released any games. Is that in is that one of your plans though, to like release a game where you just kind of making them for friends right now. I'd love to do this full time and like make a career out of it. Uh, but it is not an easy thing to start up, which is why it's a hobby for now and a fun one. Okay. So this guy's gonna be walking and I might as well turn him into a prefab. Alrighty, and now Mr. Walking Enemy, we are going to say void update, which I already have, so I don't need to recreate it. If walking, then Walk enemy, like you would walk a dog. Void walk enemy. Okay. I'll need some public variables. Public float speed. And by default, let's just make it equal to five. Now we can just add some velocity. Body plus equals, oops, no, body dot velocity plus equals uh, new vector two speed and zero. Just test it out one thing at a time, doing this by memory. Well, he does walk, he just walks way too quickly. Get motivated occasionally. Tower defense game. That sounds really cool, actually. And I totally know what you mean, because I have started about two or three other games that I just get bored of, or I get distracted working on something else. So yes, I know exactly what you mean. Oh, one thing I also like to do is say uh, max speed. Shouldn't really matter for an enemy, but what the heck? Let's just make that a couple higher. And say if speed is greater than max speed, uh, speed equals max speed. But five might just be too high. Yeah, he's just like taking off. 
Well, because I'm makes sense because I'm just keep increasing the velocity, right? Actually, which means I don't really need to say plus equals new vector two. I just need to say it's equal to a new vector two. <laughs> he kind of rolls. He's not supposed to roll. <laughs> uh, that amuses me. Okay, let's freeze the Z rotation. Maybe let's also put him on the other side of the screen so he has a little further to go. Still, like, way too fast. Look at him go. Look at him go. Okay. Say, like, two. Okay, that's more enemy appropriate speed. Hey, hey, stop. Stop. Stop that. Oh, well, that guy wants to get where he's going. Okay. Um, and obviously, so let's not set that to zero. Let's just say that body, it is equal to body.velocity.y, which should, uh, if he goes on top, it'll won't make him just kind of hover there indefinitely at a speed of zero. I'll kind of actually want to fall that way. Yeah, that works. So that is cool. Let's add some extra colliders onto him. Ah, create empty child. Keep working on those projects though, eh, Clam? Don't, uh, don't let yourself get too distracted. It's, I, I know the motivation and encouragement like can shift very widely. I am very much like that. But uh, you know, if you're enjoying a project and you want to see it through, just keep giving yourself that little bit of extra motivation, whatever it takes, just just to try to get it done. And then you get to actually see other people playing your game, and that that's really cool as well. Hey, thanks for the follow. Jav F ten sixteen. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, okay, let's see. I am going to need. Actually, I already have uh, colliders for my player game objects here for this. So what I want to do is add a head bounce collider. Jav, you a uh, game developer as well, or? Just, just kind of an enthusiast, checking it out. That's going to be kind of interesting. Now, he does not bounce off this enemy's head because I don't have scripts and things attached. Okay, what did I do on the Viking over here? Did I have a... Better head bounce. Save everything and go back to them so often. Yeah, it's... It kind of is a hassle to change it all later on, which is why as I'm starting out I just bought these characters right away. I, I don't know, I feel like one of the better ways to do it is at least for like the main characters, the main assets, the stuff you know you're going to be using the most and you really want to look good to have to, to pick up something, put a bit of money in for that stuff early on so you don't have those problems later down on the road. You don't always know that's going to be the case but that's why I kind of feel like I, I know, I, I know some, some of these guys are going to be my main characters, so I just want to have them looking good. I haven't really decided on what the enemies should be, so I don't mind changing it up yet. But uh, some of this stuff needs to be a little more straightforward, I think. Anyways, uh, okay, where was I? Give this guy a health script. No, not on the head collider. No. Let's 
give this enemy a health script. That makes more sense. Um, okay, he is, so all of a sudden this player script doesn't make too much sense. Yeah. Well, it depends. Are you paying the artist, or are you just, uh, or is it like a friend that you're at? You're having to do some work for you. But I mean, good art does take time, which is why I like pre-made assets. You know, e even if other people can be using it, I, it's it's okay for me. I'm I'm a solo developer. I don't have anyone doing this with me right now. Um, so this player number only makes sense if this is actually a player. So you know what? I'm just gonna leave this as zero for now. Do I make it maybe a different script? Oh, Upwork, isn't that, uh, I think Upwork used to be Elance. I think it did. It's gonna give me some errors if I try it now. Yeah, array out of index, because it doesn't make sense. All right, take a look at this health script, see if it makes sense for the enemy or if I need a different script. I feel like it should still make sense. I just need to make some adjustments. Okay, um, take damage, health minus equals damage. Yeah, fairly straightforward stuff. Um, that might only make sense if there's a player. Die. Okay, I think first thing I need to have in here is an identifier. Is it a player or is it an enemy? Let's make a tooltip. Leave zero if enemy. There we go. Public bool is player is enemy. Now I can do stuff that is specific. So if is player, play this damage thing. If is player, and if is enemy, I can still have them die, just in a way that's more unique to them. I'll figure out what that's going to be. Um, I should be pooling resources, so once I am happy with this, I'll make some copies. Array index is out of range. Right, right, right. Okay, let's get this thing fixed. Okay, player health. Oh, okay, that's just a text reference. Um, obviously, that doesn't make sense. Okay, so update health display. That only makes sense if it's a player taking damage. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just remembering back from a long time ago. I, I think I read an article that it, it used to be Elance, which same website. I think they just got bought out by someone. Good place. It's uh, that's where you get high quality work. Fiverr is kind of the opposite. You you can pay less, you get less, but eh. depends depends what your budget is. If you have the budget for it, yeah, definitely Upwork. You're gonna get better results. Okay, where am I getting this called from? Uh, I have too many scripts open. Don't need that open, don't need that open, don't need that open. That, okay, that's a little easier to manage. This player is enemy. Um, oh, right there, update health display. Okay, so here is my issue. If is player. Update tell display, otherwise we do not need to do that. Cool. And let's just take a look at this enemy. Is he actually gonna, do I have to change anything else or should he just take damage by default? I think he should just take damage by default. I did try to set it up that way. It would also help if I clicked on the screen. Health, yeah. His health went down. Yeah, okay, so he's taking damage. 
he is dying. I just haven't actually said what to do once he dies. So, actually, here, here's a question for you guys. Do you know about, uh, like, when you're, when you're creating stuff in a game and you need to create or destroy objects, do you just typically destroy objects and then instantiate new ones, or do you pool your resources? And, and I guess the follow-up question to that is, do you know what uh, pooling your resources is? Because if not, I will teach you. New game object. Yeah, it does. So for a game like this, where I'm gonna have, where my intention is at least to have a lot of enemies walking around, I want to be pooling them. And I, I think it matters a little less because I do intend this to be for PC and not for. What was it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Single instance for something like a player. Um, be, because this is for PC, I feel like it will be a little less stressful, resource intense, and I probably could get away without pooling, but it, at the same time, I'd rather be in the good habits than the bad ones. I'm going to make an enemy holder here. But it is all about resource management. Uh, there's another game I released on Android called Portal Ball, and I sort of did that. I, I pooled resources for some of the things that I had, and then... I didn't pull resources for some of the other ones, and I think it was causing some performance issues. Now I've gone back and I've changed some of that, so I'm pooling more stuff, and I think it's helped. Um, it was like hard closing on me at some point, and that's the only thing I could figure, it was just using too much resources. And I, I didn't think that, that was the case, but what else could it be? Anyways, uh, walking enemy, okay. Put you in here, and now that I have turned this guy into prefab, Let's put a few more enemies into the scene, but we'll do them. Honestly, pulling your resources in terms of just coding it in is more of a pain, but it is, it makes things better, but it is a pain. Okay, and I need some ground outside of here. Uh, where's my ground? That would be... No, it's not a canvas object. Where's my ground holder? Also, this is kind of a mess, so... Just create a new game object and call this player holder so I don't have all these objects in my hierarchy because this is kind of annoying. Kind of makes me wonder, though, in, in games like uh, Overwatch, for instance, you know, are they pooling their resources for things like bullets? Or are they just instantiating? Like, Blizzard knows how to make a game really, really efficient in, on the computer and, and run really well. They're very good at optimizing. Okay, that looks better. That was starting to drive me nuts. Here's my ground holder. Now we can actually see it. Um, okay, let's just duplicate some ground. That over here, and same thing on the other end, so I can have some room for my enemies to walk off. This is another thing I hate about uh, game development is level design. I, I'd love to be, like be working with th three people, a team like in a team of three. I do the programming. I'd have someone doing the art. I'd have someone doing the level design. That would make me so happy. But as a solo dev, got to do it all. <laughs> they probably do too. Yeah, they, uh, like I said, they, they know how to do it right. And it pays off. They're a big company and man, Overwatch is so transparent with like all the updates and things they're doing. Okay. Now I need an enemy spawner. Enemy spawner. I'll just have one for now. And I will tag this so I can actually see where it is. In red, because enemies are bad. They're very, very bad. Okay. And gameplay manager. 
I'll put a new script on here. Uh, no, actually, I worked as like uh, an account executive doing paperwork and making packing slips and absolutely nothing to do with programming. I'd love to actually do that. It would be so much fun. Uh, but it is a family business right now, so that is what I am doing in the meantime. And I only started programming about a year and a half ago. So if I had, if uh, game development courses had been available like when I went to university, oh man, that would have been so cool. But I, th I thought programming back then was like, you need to know hardcore trigonometry and advanced mathematics, which I, I don't know, I guess maybe you do, depending on what division you're going into. But I'm not good at that type of stuff, and it scared the heck out of me. Okay, let's open up this script. Public game object enemy spawner and probably help if I save the script, so it would show up. different places you can go. Like I said, I don't actually prefer YouTube for uh, tutorials, uh, unless it's just like a one-off thing you need, in which case it's fine. But I mean, if you want to follow a series, I think that's when you like going to a site specifically for that type of thing uh, is a lot more beneficial. That, that's why I, I like Udemy. That is where I learned. Um, okay, what was I doing? Enemy spawner over here. Gameplay controller. And it will need an array of public game object walking enemies. Actually, you know what? We'll make this a private array because I'm not going to go adding all these guys into the scene. And I already have a script on here, so I can just find this script and what I can say upon initializing. Um, walking enemies equals game object dot find objects of type plural because it's an array I'm dealing with here. Walking enemies. Oops. Enemy movement rather. Dot. Can I do it like that? That's going to give me an error if I do it that way too. So let's actually change it to this. Enemy movement. And actually, I'm just going to change this now. I have to do this in a different way. Enemies, okay, equals all of them. Now I can have a separate array. I'll call this private game object walking enemies. Do it for each loop in here. For each enemy movement, this enemy in enemies. If this enemy dot is why are you not showing up walking oh that's why I just named the variable something different if this enemy dot is walking and I just realized I actually need this to be a list because I'm gonna have to add to a list I'll make a list like that new list. I always get confused with declaring lists. Ah, what's this index? What's this index? Just declare it like that. OK, 
Okay, I just need to check this for a sec. It's clear. Lists. There is nothing wrong with checking help documentation if you forget how to do something, because sometimes your mind just goes blank. Oh, I'm not naming my list, that's why. That should do with a trick. Yeah, uh, the course I always liked is the Ben Tristam course. That one has always been really, really good. It's been high quality. It's actually one of the top rated ones on Udemy as well. Oh my god, I'm drawing such a blank on creating a list right now. Okay, there we go. Finish up my loop. If this enemy is walking, uh, walking enemies dot add. Uh, this this enemy dot game object, and that should make it the list. Now I can make a public float. Uh, for now, I'll just call it enemy spawn, right? Because I only have one type of enemy. Equals five seconds. And I don't like putting things in a wake other than calling other methods. So initialize variables. It's all in here. And once variables are initialized, let's do under start instead. We will go create a method called spawn enemies. You always keep the reference materials. Absolutely. And the, the more you do it, the less you need to rely on them. Like creating a loop used to be so confusing for me. Now I can do that easy. Um, where I draw a blank is apparently creating a list. So that's fun. Oh, and actually I don't wanna uh, do that like that. I want to invoke repeating. I'm gonna call this over and over. So I'm gonna call spawn enemies and I'm gonna call this at uh, the rate of enemy spawn rate. Boy. Invoke repeating. Oops. And, you know, I actually call this the correct name. That would be great. Spawn enemies. Okay, and now I know what I need to do over here. I need a new variable under this enemy movement script that detects whether or not the enemy is actually on the screen. And I think I have something like that for player movement, so I don't have to really code this. I can just kind of copy the relevant bits over. Um, or is that from a different, no, that's from my projectile script. That's where I have it. So I need to reopen that projectile script. Because why code things twice when you can code them once and then copy your code? That's what the cool kids do. is on the screen. Okay, I knew I had a variable like that here. So let's just copy this relevant code over. But basically the process for, I'm gonna use for uh, pooling resources. And on became visible is on the screen. Enemy movement. And then I also have a 
void reset, which get calls at the very beginning. On be okay, and this basically will reset all of the variables when they go off the screen. By the way, if, if anyone watching has any questions about like what I'm doing or you just kind of want some clarification or me to explain something that doesn't make sense, uh, feel free to ask and I will be happy to explain. And oh right, I need a reference to the start position. Start pause, which is simple enough. At awake or initialize variables, I will say start pause is equal to transform.position. Uh, getting all my scripts confused. Oops. Put it over here. Start pause equals transform dot position. Okay, and I think I need to call a reset at the start too. Yeah, right under awake. Set. So reset the enemy off the screen. Um, it's not going to work properly right now, but I just want to make sure I'm not getting any errors at this point, which it's starting up. So okay, that's good. No reference exception except for this one. Walking enemies dot add. Doesn't recognize this. Object reference not set to instance of object. Why? The list isn't the problem, so it's got to be this enemy. Find objects of type. Okay, let's just print and see what happens. So it's only finding, okay, it's finding the one instance of the walking enemy and then it's getting the error and it's uh, closing at that point. Okay, why are you getting an error on me? Okay, let's just try. Print walking enemies print this enemy dot game object we are now on to bug fixing okay this is null why is this null print walking enemies Oh, because I haven't added anything into it yet. Yeah, that makes sense. If I put that at the end there. Probably won't get to that line because it's getting the error right here. Hmm. enemies it's a game object list I'm adding the game object this enemy is not null what the heck okay I'm just going to try something here Private game object. I'm just going to make a secondary array. Walking enemies two. Just to see if it'll give me the same error. Give me some clarification. 
and uh, uh, with the array it's a little bit different. I'm just going to make it equal to the number of the enemies in the scene. Let's say Arcane Enemies 2 is equal to the same thing here. Uh, now I'd have to use a for each loop. And i equals zero, i plus plus. There's two at blocking enemies two at position i equals this enemy dot game object. Of course, now it won't even run. Can't change this to what this is saying. Like, can't do an array conversion. Can't implicitly convert type to enemy movement. Do you need yeah. Oh, script to game object. Right. I make this mistake like every single time I use an array. Enemy movement. It's not a game object array, it's just an array. I did save. Oh, now I can't do this conversion. Okay. It's right, I it's not gonna get to that line of code because it's still getting an error at this line of code. So let's just comment that out for now. Array index is out of range. Lovely. Uh, it's possible I am just getting hungry. Public array. Gameplay controller. How many, how many enemies? Oh, it is adding all of them in there. Isn't that weird? But it's getting the error on the first time. Put that in there at the end of the loop, where it should be. OK, now it's not getting an error. That's kind of weird. So what the hell is wrong with my list? Okay, you know what? We're just not gonna add the uh, game object. We're just gonna add this enemy. And we're gonna make this an array, not of game object. We're gonna make this an enemy movement array. Or a list rather. Let's try it out. Same error. I might just have to read up on lists a little bit because obviously it's, I'm doing something very basic and very wrong. Yeah. You know what, I, I want, wanted to keep this going for a little bit longer, but I'm getting pretty hungry and I'm getting a little bit frustrated with why I'm with uh, this at the moment. So I think I might end this game development stream here for now. But uh, really, thank you guys for tuning in and watching. It's, I, I know it, it's been keeping me motivated going to keep working on this longer than I probably would sit here and do it if I wasn't streaming this. So thanks a lot and uh, thank you for the follows. I will be back on later tonight playing some Overwatch, so if you want to come watch that, you're free to stick around and hang out then. But uh, thank, uh, again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Thanks very much, Clown. Appreciate it. Take care.